Okay, I want to talk a little bit about uh, gradient options. Now down here on the bottom, I'm going to actually highlight these two pieces here and we'll uh, make those a little larger. We have we have what's this is these are just vector artwork. Okay, if I uncolor this, it's vector artwork. So I have a red square here, a blue square here, and then down here I have a gradient that's actually going from red to blue. So if I cl click on that uh, bar right there, you can see the gradient shows up in fill stroke. And if I click that last uh, square it'll show you how that gradient's being made. So it starts at red and it goes to blue and you can actually see the transition right here. It's linear, right? If I click the advanced tab, again, you'll see the starting point is red, the ending point is blue, okay? All right, now I'm gonna actually take these two squares. I'm gonna take this square and this square. I've selected those two and I'm actually gonna go to the effects menu and um, I'm going to choose something called a blend. Now, at this point, uh, that blend is in 20 steps. So I want it to go from red to blue in 20 steps. So let's click OK and see what that looks like. And I'll click off of that. And you can see that's kind of the same gradient, except you can see the bars in here. And that's because that's 20 different vectors uh, with different shades of red and blue. So it's basically 10 steps of red and 10 steps of blue between each other, right? So if I were to take this graphic and say, you know what, let's make that more than 20. Let's go on up to maybe like 50. So now I have 50 steps. So 25 steps of red, 25 steps of blue. If I click OK on that and then click off, you'll see that's beginning to look a lot more like my gradient down here. But again, it's not a gradient. It's, it's literally steps of vector artwork. So if I go to print these two, right, if I go to print this one above and this bar right here, and I click on print, okay, you can see the two in here, right? But if I, if I take a look at my uh, third tab here, okay, and I'm looking at this thing, I also have a check mark for smooth gradients here. So what that's doing is that's telling uh, Flexi to apply a a mathematical algorithm to gradients to try to smooth them out so you don't see those steps. Now you may still see the steps on the top one there. They may still show up because that's part of the issue with doing uh, gradients with just vector artwork, right? So in other words, if I look at this across the top here and I want to print just that and I go to print, right? And I go to that third tab there you'll see if I turn on my color correction, uh, when I click color settings and rendering intent, it's actually giving me rendering intents for vector artwork, right? But if I send my bitmap down here to print with my color correction turned on, it actually uses for rendering intent gradient. So, you know, again, it's, you may want to, if you're trying, if you're seeing your gradients and they're not exactly uh, shifting correctly, in other words, if you're seeing little bars in them uh, or little uh, uh, bands and so forth, you could actually change the, the gradient uh, rendering intent that may give you some assistance in, in uh, correcting that. You could also change this to uh, different rendering intents to see if you get a better, smoother gradient or, the colors that you're after. Uh, all of that is part of color management, but I do wanted, I just wanted to show you the difference between those two uh, pieces there, right? Now I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and delete that blending effect here and I'm going to go back to these two. I want to show you something else too and I'm going to use it above, okay? First of all, let's take this gradient. These are just regular gradients, okay? That's, I've just applied a gradient to each one of those. That's all that is. Now I'm going to take this gradient and up here, I'm going to show you with this little uh, dotted uh, line button here on the bottom. That's how the gradient is displayed across here. Okay, so let's go ahead and leave that as is. And let's take this gradient right here and I'm going to extend that. I'm going to make it 40 inches long and let's let's also make it uh, non-proportional. Whoops, let's undo that. Okay, so let's make it non-proportional. I'm just going to increase the length to 40. So you can see 
If I click that uh, line again, again, it's starting at red and ending at blue, no problem. If I go to the second tab here, okay, the second one, same exact one as before, and I go to my advanced tab and I uncheck transform with object. Okay, I'm gonna click okay with that. And then I'm gonna change this to 40 inches. Watch, watch how the gradient changes. Notice it's it's more red on the end and less blue. Look at the look at this. It actually kept the original length of the uh, gradient application to that, and then it just extended it out here. So the one on top here, it transformed with the with the image. So that one on top, it changed the length to match the uh, length of the object. On the bottom one, it just kept the same uh, gradient length and just applied it to the new um, gradient here, right? So that's what that transform is. So let's let's keep that in mind because I, I know some of you may have had issues. Like if you take this one above here, let's apply this gradient to it. And let's take the bottom one and apply the same gradient, right? So those are exactly the same. It really is, is different when it comes to even with text and so forth. So if I go in here and take a look, that's the full gradient, right? No problem. So if I go, oops, let's <laughs> undo that, sorry. If I go in here then and I say, I wanna make that, uh, you know, let's make it 36 inches, right? There we go, no problem. So it's extending that. If you notice, it's gonna extend it right here. So it's keeping the same shading throughout the whole image here. But if I go to the bottom, and then I go to my advanced tab here and I turn off that transform for the gradient. And then I go in and change the length of that to 36. You'll see it's very different, right? Because it, it kept the same settings for the original gradient. It didn't transform with the lettering. So some of you may actually have uh, uh, found this accidentally. And, and once you turn that off for a gradient, you know, that's that could be redefined for that gradient. So just be careful with that. But that's sometimes that is what you want, but it's just more than likely you want that gradient to transform with the object. OK, with the object. Now, I'm going to also undo these two. And I'm going to undo these as well. I'm just going to go back here to my original two lengths. There we go. Let's take this bottom one here and go to the advanced tab and we're going to leave transform on, but we're going to go to use HSV transition. Okay. And I'm going to click okay on that. And you notice what happened here was, is it, it totally changed that gradient, All right? If I go back and I turn that off, then it uses the original two uh, colors. So this, you know, use this trans, uh, transition here, this uh, hue, saturation, um, uh, and uh, vibrance is going to change it completely. And you'll see the changes up here. So not a lot of times you can actually just look and see this is the result up here at the top, you know, and this is the beginning color, the end color. Okay. All right. So just, just keep that in mind. It's very, very important. Um, but the biggest one is that transform. You know, if, if you want it, that's typically left, leave that on typically okay all right so that's kind of an, a little explanation of gradients when you get ready to print gradients uh, and and again you hit, hit that print and you can see the gradient here besides the fact that I uh, turned on the the uh, color the color correction we wanted that to be on in my color settings here for rendering intent of course I, I could change it for the gradient here but you definitely want to make sure that smooth gradients is checked that's going to give you the best opportunity for uh, lessening the banding that can happen in gradients. So even though it's a mathematical formula that's being applied to the gradient, uh, it's sort of like those boxes that we used, the blending mode. It's just using hundreds and hundreds of those so you don't really see the, the, the banding. But uh, if your gradient is big enough, uh, sometimes or like wide enough and long enough, sometimes you may see a little banding in there. Make sure that smooth gradients is turned on uh, and that will give you uh, the best results for printing gradients. Hope this helps you. Uh, this is a uh, community exclusive, uh, not found out on the internet, only community members get to see this lesson.